Hello everyone, so recently we tried using a Raspberry Pi 4 as a desktop computer and that was a little bit of a substandard experience really, but uh, looking at the Pi 4 again, well it has a couple of USB 3 ports on it and gigabit ethernet and that got me thinking, perhaps that could be a small basic NAS, a network attached storage device. Although I'm not sure I could use it as my main NAS, I built mine a, a few years ago, I'm quite happy with it, but uh, always looking at the options for a backup NAS. So a NAS is a network attached storage device which allows you to store documents, pictures, videos on a single system which is accessible to all devices on your home network. I found these a very useful item, especially if you're using multiple computers. For example, watching videos from a home theatre PC and working from a main desktop PC or even a laptop. So yes, uh, Having a NAS is a good option for storing documents, videos, etc. Of course there are options like Nextcloud. I've done more in-depth video on this. But anyway, I've, I wrote this whole tutorial on what to do. First tutorial I've written for a little while. So what you'll need, Raspberry Pi, Pi 4 current generation, but if you're looking at this in the future, whatever the current generation of the Pi is. Obviously one of the Pis that has USB 3 on it, uh, the performance is significantly better in terms of hard drive writing compared to the USB 2 ports and that really was the limitation before the Pi 3s and before that. But yeah, Pi 4 should be quite feasible. So external hard drives and I've given a couple of affiliate links here, 6TB and 10TB drives. Appreciate it if you want to purchase one of those. I've been a fan of Seagate drives for a while, I've not had a much luck really with Western Digital, although to be fair I have one Western Digital now in my main desktop system. It's working alright now, but I've had some bad experiences before. And if you want to use more than two USB 3 drives then you're going to need a USB 3 hub. So the Raspberry Pi Imager, very useful for actually writing to the micro SD card and it verifies the disk write so you know anything you write to micro SD card is going to be verified and bootable. So for the Pi 4 and assuming onwards we can use the 64-bit OS and I've gone down the Ubuntu route nowadays. I, I did used to go down the Raspbian, Debian route but gone back to Ubuntu now. Although you miss out on the Raspberry config but you know, that's more useful if you're going to be doing sort of more graphical stuff or things with a GPIO which we're not doing here. This is just going to be a headless server. So that is the intention of this, it'll be the Raspberry Pi with some USB 3 hard drives and that's it. You, oh, and a network, <laughs> network cable of course. <laughs> so this takes a few minutes to write the image to the micro SD card and we'll leave it in the computer because there's some more changes I want to make to it before we insert it into the Raspberry Pi. Of course there should be the question of why not buy a QNAP or Synology NAS, but uh, honestly I find the support times are a lot lower than uh, just installing a server-based Linux install, and besides you can upgrade Linux in the future, you're not uh, constrained to what the manufacturer is going to provide you. My father bought a NAS not so long after I built my original, I can't remember what exactly he bought now, but uh, Anyway, the one he has uh, ended up with some uh, vulnerabilities on it and it was no longer supported. And there you are, my Linux based server was uh, still working and still supported just because I upgraded the version of Ubuntu and Debian. I've switched between the two operating systems over time. What I'm doing here is setting up the network config. So I've given it a static IP address of 192.168.6.49 with a slash 24 range, that is uh, 254 IP addresses. And I've set the gateway IP address, and we've got the DNS servers, so that is open DNS, but you could use uh, anything else you wanted. I've set DHCP as no, because I'm not using that. We've set a static IP, and yeah, it's not an optional thing. This is what we want. I'm not going to set a Wi-Fi, but here is the commands if you want to set one. So. You just literally give it the name of your access point, and if your access point has a space in it, then you will need to put it in quotes. So with the network config file done, just save that, close it, and I'll eject the system boot, or the micro SD card with the system boot on it. I've inserted the micro SD card and Ethernet cable and powered on the Pi, so it takes a couple of minutes to boot up, 
but when it's ready, I can now connect to it with SSH. So it's SSH Ubuntu at the IP address I have just assigned it. So yes, I want to confirm. So down to there and the password is Ubuntu. Ubuntu without the quotes, of course, but yeah, it's literally the word Ubuntu. So the password has expired. We need to change it. So you put the current password in, the current password of Ubuntu and assign it a new password, whatever password you would like to go for. So it updates the password and logs you out. So now I have to log back in. Log back in with your new password. And we're going to check for updates because it's a bit fussy about that. A list of available updates is more than a week old. Check for new updates. So you do apt update. It's worth getting it out of the way now. Let's just get the updates done. It's going to take a while depending on the speed of your micro SD card. Oh, by the way, I meant to mention I've gone for a 16 gig micro SD card for this because it's a NAS. Most of the data is going to be on the hard drive. I pretty much just need a basic micro SD card for the operating system. And even 16 gig is a bit large, but um, well, I think I've got an 8 gig micro SD card, but nothing much smaller. And now I can do the apt get dist upgrade or apt list upgradable. But I'm mixing it up between being old fashioned and using apt get and modern by using just the word apt. The update's completed and since there was a kernel update, this is going to necessitate a reboot. But before I do a reboot, I'm going to change the host name because this also requires a reboot or requires a reboot to ensure it works properly from now on. So that's sudo hostname ctl set hostname and you give it a name for your system. So I've called it my NAS. <laughs> Very imaginative. And then sudo reboot to reboot the Raspberry Pi. And that is it. So power on the Pi and to move across to adding storage. So plug in the USB 3 hub or optional and connect all the USB 3 hard drives. If you get a connection refused on SSH, it most likely has not finished rebooting or it's too busy to respond. But now it is ready to respond, so type in my password. And there we go. I'm going to clear the screen oh, and incidentally the shortcut for that is Control and L. So let's have a look at the partitions. So that is LSBLK list block. So I've described what some of these components are here, but yeah, loop is the snap folders, the temporary snap folders, and there's a whole video about that, the snap packaging formats that Ubuntu use. And we have the MMC BLK, so that is the micro SD card. And anything with SDA or SDB, SDC, etc., is a storage device. So I've only mounted one on here because, uh, yeah, I only have one USB 3 hard drive to hand now. A couple of the others I ripped apart to put in my NAS because inside a USB hard drive is a normal SATA hard drive. From what I've seen anyway, couldn't, couldn't guarantee it everywhere. Let's get rid of the old data because this could be a brand new hard drive and formatted for Windows, which we don't necessarily want. We want it to be formatted for Linux. Formatting for Linux will get the best speed out of it. Press D to delete any given partition name from the drive. Well, I've only got one partition on here, so it's gone. And this is completely temporary at this point. You could actually back out at this point and it won't do anything to the drive. So now we're going to create one new partition and it is going to be a primary partition primary partition one and just go for the default for all of these so yep want to do that oh yeah that's fine yep that's all good and we'll write those changes to the drive so writing to the drive now will delete all the data or make it very difficult to recover i should say anyway now i want to format it i'm going to format it to extension 4 I suppose B-tree file system, BTRFS, could be another option. But keeping with extension 4, so yep, just 
go of that. Um, I don't need to do anything here, just wait for the formatting to take place. And that's it. So repeat it for all the other drives that you're connecting to your system. As I've said, I'm only connecting one here, so job done. Now on to mount the drives. I'm going to imaginatively call it disk1 under the MNT folder. And incidentally, the difference between MNT and media is MNT is more permanent storage and media is like a temporary storage. Temporary is what you would normally consider a USB 3 hard drive to be, but in this case, we want it to be permanent and mounted at boot up. So I'm going to make the folder under slash MNT. So we need the block ID. I bet the block ID has changed from this tutorial. <laughs> of course it has. <laughs> that would be too easy for me just to uh, copy and paste it. So I don't know if I was being a little bit too complicated here, but uh, when we edit the slash etc slash fstab, the file system table file, they do need to be particular spaces. I'll show you it in this video first. So if you do sudo nano slash etc slash fstab, we can see everything here is actually more like a tab rather than spaces. Yeah, it's just something to be aware of. So I use that echo command. So I use the echo command instead, although it means a bit of uh, typing on it. But it is least possible to copy and paste with Control Shift and C and Control Shift and V. So yeah, I've copied and pasted that uh, UUID value and replaced it with the one that was there in the tutorial. So this is going to echo the line and append it to fstab. And you can see it's got the tab spacing there. And you can check how it looks. And yep, looks fine for me. And that's pretty much like the example there. Although it would look better if I had full screen here, but I need to do this video, so you're gonna have to put up with a split screen here. So mount the drives, sudo mount a, and you don't get any feedback. Good, isn't it? They could do echo dollar question mark and that would be a zero. Zero just means everything's okay. So now I want to take ownership of the drives. sudo so chown who am I, who am I, dash h capital R slash mnt slash disk one, two, three, etc. And who am I will be my username because I don't know the username you have on your system. I've just left it as Ubuntu, so it'll be sudo ch own ubuntu ubuntu dash h capital r and we can confirm that using ll slash mnt and i can confirm that i have indeed taken ownership of disk one i'm not doing any kind of raid with this nas this is just going to be jbod just a bunch of disks if you do want to go down the RAID route, well with the Raspberry Pi that's going to be a software RAID, like MDADM. I've used that in the past, but uh, had some bad experiences and lost quite a lot of data through it. Just because when drives start failing it's uh, not easy to recover from and requires a lot more work than just, uh, say, losing one drive and losing all the data on that drive. Well, it's perhaps better to have a backup of that drive but back up through another system rather than backed up across a RAID. Although I will admit, RAIDs are a lot more convenient. Of course, there's another option of looking at B-Tree file system, BTRFS, but that falls outside of this tutorial. So let's share the drives. <laughs> what would be the use of a NAS without drives shared to other computers? Well, wouldn't be much of a network attached storage device, would it now? So you've got a couple of options, NFS and Samba. Network file shares, good for Unix, Linux, Mac OS, or Samba or SMB, which you can use for Microsoft Windows and Android phones, but it can also be understood by Linux as well. I'm not sure about Mac OS, but... So, installing NFS, that's the dependencies. So yeah, that's fine. And I've done further setup tutorials on this if you want to see how it's done in full with the client and server side, but we're just focusing on the server side here. And that's where edit the exports file. So do sudo nano slash etc slash exports. And that gives us this file here with uh, everything commented out. 
So I want to export the folders and I specify an IP address I'm going to export them to or allow access to. So I paste that into there and note the use of tab instead of spaces. If you do spaces, the service will not start properly. Read, write, sync, uh, disable root access and and the security mechanism of subtree check. And then press Control X and save, yes to save, and then start or restart the service. So do sudo service nfs server restart. And if all being well, you won't receive any feedback. And now to edit the Samba config file. So let's look down here. So we've got the work group name here. If you want to change that for something different for your Windows systems. Or the server string. You can just leave that as is though. In fact, what we're going to do is go all the way down to the bottom of the file. Let's just scroll past everything. And we're going to add a share here called MyNAS. Uh, very imaginative again. And I'm going to export the whole slash MNT folder. Uh, it won't be read only, but it will be browsable from other systems. So control X, Y, yes, save that. And we need to add a user account to access the Samba share, but it uh, has to be a username that you have on the system. So it could be just the Ubuntu username that I'm using right at the moment. So I'm going to use the who am I variable and set a new SMB password. And finally, restart the Samba service. Well, in terms of accessing the SMB share, well, on Linux, I'll have to direct file manager to SMB colon forward slash forward slash and the IP address of the NAS. Then I click on the folder, the folder share, and we have to specify a username and password, which we've just set up. So I was using the Ubuntu username and the password there and that is the folder share so how quick is it at reading and writing a file i need to take something of a fair size what have i got oh, probably one of the videos i've just been recording that'll do so um a three gig video file here so let's paste that what sort of speeds are we getting that's kind of on par with being a usb 2 speed and I just looked over to confirm that I have actually plugged the hard drive into the USB 3 port. And it's on a gigabit network. I'm not sure something is as fast as the specs would suggest they are. Anyway, that's a look at creating a NAS with a Raspberry Pi 4. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later. Mm -hmm.